Hello everybody, how are you? This is me Anam and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to study about the properties involving operations on sets. Now what are the operations of sets? I have already discussed these in my previous videos. There are four operations of sets. Number one is union, number two intersection, number three difference and number four is complement. I have already uploaded these videos on my channel. You can go and check them out later on. So uh, today we're going to talk about the properties on each of these operations. Right. So the first one we're going to uh, discuss is the, the union. Okay. So uh, there are going to be three properties and we are going to prove each one of them for each operation. Like first one is the commutative property with respect to union. All right, so let's talk about what is commutative property. Now, if A and B are any two sets, then A union B is equal to B union A. It is called the commutative property of two sets with respect to union. Okay. Now, um, it this commutative property with, um, with respect to union is very much similar to the commutative property with respect to addition. Right. Now, here you can see that A union B, whether you write A before the union sign or B before the union sign, the answer will remain the same. Okay. Now, let me uh, help, uh, let me explain it further and it will be more clear to you uh, with the help of an example. Now, let's have a look here. If A is equal to 1, 2, 3 and B is equal to 2, 4, 6, verify that A union B is equal to B union A. Right. So, they have asked you to prove that these, uh, the commutative property between with respect to union hold holds between these two sets right so how are we going to solve it now first of all we're going to write we're going to solve it for the a union b now a union b is equal to one two three union two four six and when we're going to write it it will be a union b 1 as it is, 2 is common, so we're going to write it only once. Then 3, 4, and 6, right? This is A union B. Now let's find out B union A, which is 2, 4, 6 union, when we're going to write A, which is 1, 2, 3. And uh, when we, if I write it 2, 4, 6, 1, 3. Okay. Or you can also write it as 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. Both mean the same thing. We have already only uh, have uh, like organized the numbers in the sequence. Okay. So here you can see that A union B. The answer for the A union B and the answer for the B union A are same. So A union B is equal to B union A. Hence, proved. Right? So let me tell you one thing. You might get confused in this thing often if you're new to sets that if you find a difference in the sequence of the elements written in the sets, don't get confused. In sets, the sequence of the elements can change, but since the elements are same, uh, dis, um, irrespective of their positions, they will still be same. Okay, like if we here say one, two, three, four, six, and here it is two, four, six, one, three. You see that all the elements are same. Okay, so the sequence, the uh, uh, sequence of the elements does not matter. Okay. So here we have proved the commutative property with respect to union. Okay. Now let's move further to the next property, which is the associative property. Okay. Now let's have a look at the associative property of union. Now here, if A, B and C are any three sets. Now here in the commutative, we were taking only two sets, but now here we are take, talking about three sets. So associative property um, is for when you have three elements, right? Three sets. So if A, B, and C are any three sets, then A union bracket B union C is equal to bracket A union B bracket uh, union C, right? Like 
is called the associative property of union of these sets. So here you can see that they have put brackets around two of the sets and in the next they have changed the orientation of the brackets like it was for the second and third element uh, set and now here is for the first and second. Now they want to say that if the, um, the union between the three sets remain the same irrespective of the position of the brackets. Okay now we have to prove it with the help of an example. Uh, it will help you ex um, understand this better. So, and let me tell you one thing. This associative property of union is very much similar to the associative property of addition where it was A plus bracket B plus C is equal to bracket A plus B bracket plus C, right? So, here, if A is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, B is equal to 1, 3, 5, 7 and C is equal to 2, 4, 6, 8, then verify a union b bracket b union c is equal to bracket a union b union c now what are we going to do is that uh, we are going to first uh, solve this side the left hand side okay and then we are going to solve it for the right hand side so let's uh, go with the first one which is left hand side which is L H S is equal to A union B union C. I'm going to write it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 union bracket. 1, 3, 5, 7 union 2, 4, 6, 8. Bracket close. <clears throat> now you know that we're going to first solve the round brackets. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah. Now, since we are going to uh, combine these, we're going to write it as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8. Right? We have written all these digits in a sequence. Now when we are going to union the A and the answer to B union C, here you can see the first five elements are same. So we are going to write them only once, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, 7, 8. Okay. Now let's talk about the right hand side which is A union B inside a bracket union C. So it goes like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, union 1, 3, 5, 7, bracket close, union 2, 4, 6, 8. Sorry, um, I have to write the curly brackets here. Right? Okay. Uh, now, um, after uniting these two, We'll get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, union, 2, 4, 6, 8. So here I'm going to write the answer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So here you can see that left hand side is equal to the right hand side. Okay, here I'm gonna write it for you. And so you can see that left hand side is equal to the right hand side, which means that A union B union C is equal to A union B bracket union C. Hence, proof or hence verified. You can write both. Okay, so we have done, we have completed the associative property. Now let's move towards the third property. All right, now let's talk, let's talk about the third property, which is the identity property with respect to union. Now in sets, uh, the empty set phi, or you can write, it, write the empty set like this, acts as the identity of union, right? That is A union empty set is equal to A, right? 
Now, uh, this is very much similar to zero, the identity property with respect to addition, like a plus zero is equal to a, right? Whatever one, two plus zero is equal to two. So that is the identity property. So the properties of union are very much uh, same to the properties of addition. Okay. Now he here, let me explain it with the help of an example. If a is equal to a e i o u, then verify a union phi is equal to a or a union an empty set is equal to a. Now here you can see that left hand side equal to a union phi a is a e i o u union empty set and when you combine an empty set with a fuller set because there is nothing in the empty set the answer will remain the same a e i o u right and um, which is equal to a okay so you can see that a union phi is equal to a hence verified all right you can write it as hence proved or hence verified both mean the same so this is uh, the identity property with respect to union okay now let's move further towards the properties on intersection of sets Okay, now let's see the properties involving the intersection of sets. Now, uh, we are going to discuss the same three properties that we discussed for the union of sets. So the first one is the commutative property with respect to intersection. Now, here it says that if A and B are any two sets, then A intersection P is equal to B intersection A is called the commutative, commutative property of intersection of sets. Now, it means that whether you put a before the intersection sign and b after that or you put b before the intersection sign and then a the result will be same the common elements uh, in these two sets will remain the same irrespective of the position of the two sets all right now here's an example like if a is equal to a b c d and b is equal to a c e g then verify that a intersection b is equal to b intersection a so you have to prove that left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So left hand side is A intersection B, right? So it goes like A, B, C, D intersection A, C, E, G. Now what you get the answer, what are the common elements in between these two sets? You see that A is common we'll write it down b is there no it's not there c is there yes we're going to write c d is there no and the rest is not so the result of a intersection b is a and c now moving towards the right hand side we'll which is b intersection a we're going to write a c e g intersection a b c d the answer that we get is A common, yes, C, yes, it's there, EG, no, it's not there. So, that's it. So, left hand side is equal to the right hand side, which means that A intersection B is equal to B intersection A, hence proved, right? So, the commutative property between two sets holds true between the intersection of sets. Okay. Now, let's move towards the associative property. Now, let's have a look at the associative property with respect to intersection. Now, if we have three sets A, B and C, then A intersection B bracket, uh, A intersection bracket B intersection C is equal to bracket A intersection B bracket close intersection C are equal. Right now, it is called the associative property of intersection of sets, which is basically uh, if you change the orientation of the if you change the placement of the brackets, um, the answer won't change even in intersection. Okay, now let me explain this with the help of an example. It's like if a is equal to 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, b is equal to 2, 4, 6, 
and c is equal to 2, 4, 5, 7, then verify that a intersection, b intersection, c is equal to a intersection, b in brackets and section c. Now, first of all, we're going to solve it for the left hand side. So, the left hand side goes like, left hand side is a intersection, b intersection, c, right? So, first we're going to write a, 1, 2, 5, a, intersection, big bracket, 2, 4, 6, intersection, 2, 4, 5, 7, right? Now, here you can see that 1, 2, 5, 8, intersection. Now, we're going to see if there are any common elements between the B intersection C. So, yes, if you can see here that 2 is common, 4 is common. 6 is there? No. So, we're going to write it down. Now, here see that if there is any element common here. Now, 1 is not there. 2 is there? Yes, 2 is there. 5 and 8? No. So, the answer for the common element between these three sets is just 2. Right? Now, let's solve it for the right hand side which is A intersection B intersection C. Right? Now, in the brackets, we're going to write 1, 2, 5, 8 which is the set A intersection 2, 4, 6 which is another which is the set B and now we're going to write the set C which is 2, 4, uh, 5 and 7. Now write down the answer for the first. So if here you see that is there any common elements? 1 is not there but 2 is there. But the rest of the elements are not present. So in here we're going to put the sign of intersection 2, 4, 5, 7. Now do you see any element common in between? Yes, only 2. Which means that left hand side is equal to right hand side. Because here you see the, both the answers are the uh, element 2. Which means that A intersection B intersection C is equal to A intersection B in brackets intersection C is verified. Okay. So. It means that the associative property also holds for intersection. Okay. Now let's move towards the third one which is the identity property. Okay. Now let's move towards the identity property with respect to intersection. Now here in sets the universal set U acts as the identity of intersection. Right. That is A intersection, un uh, A intersection universal set is equal to A. Right now, if you remember the identity property with respect to uh, union, the empty set was the identity for the union, but here the identity for intersection is um, the universal set. Now, let me uh, explain it with the help of um, the, an example here. If u is equal to a, b, c till z and a is a, e, i, o, u, then verify that a intersection u is a. Now, uh, we're going to write it as a intersection u which is first we're going to write a a e i o u intersection a b c till c now when we're going to write uh, the answer obviously uh, we're going to take out the only the common elements which are present in the universal set so obviously a is also present E is also present, I is also present, O is also present, and U is also present, which is equal to A, right? So, it is also verified that the universal set is the acts as the identity of intersection, right? So, this identity property is also um, proved for intersection. Okay, now, now we're going to discuss the properties that holds true for the difference of set, okay? Now, let's move further. All right, now let's have a look at the properties of involving difference of sets. All right, so the only one op uh, property can be applied to the difference of sets, which is the commutative property, but it does not hold true. Like if A and B are two unequal sets, then A minus B is not equal to B minus A. Now, you, if you remember, 
the commutative property of subtraction that the answers are not same if it's a minus b is not equal to b minus a like 2 uh, 5 minus 2 is not equal to 2 minus 5 right uh, one at one side it will be 3 at the other side it will be minus 3 so the answers are not same same is here because of this difference so the same concept is applied over here so if a and b are two unequal sets unequal i have already explained in my previous videos that what is equal what is an equal set um, unequal sets means that the elements of the sets are not same okay so here when you're going to subtract the two together and change their positions the answer will not be same right so let me help uh, let me explain it with the help of an example here you see that if a is equal to 0 1 2 and b is equal to 1 2 3 then verify that a minus b is not equal to b minus a right so here you can see that let's talk about the left hand side which is the a minus b now here a is 0 1 2 minus 1 2 3 here in subtraction it means that we are only going to subtract the elements of b from a okay so and the rest of the elements of a will be written as it is so zero will be written as it is and here you can see that one and two are present so while subtracting one and two the element zero remains only okay because one and two are present in b so it is subtracted from here now coming towards the right hand side which is b minus a you're going to write b 1 2 3 minus 0 1 2 here when we are subtracting 1 is subtracted 2 is subtracted the element that is left is 3 so here you can see that here the element 0 is left and here the element 3 is left so a minus b is certainly not equal to b minus a right so this is the only property that involves the difference of sets because we take difference of sets between two sets only at this level okay so now let's move towards the properties of the complement of set okay all right now let's have a look at the properties involving the complement of a set all right so the properties involving sets and their complements are um, now, let me tell you that um, there are only four properties that are associated with the complement of the sets and complement of the set is always related to the, its own set, right? So, um, there are four properties. It's not related to the commutative property and all. There are totally different four um, properties. Now, let's have a look what these properties are which holds true for the complement of sets. Now, the first one is A complement union A is equal to universal set, like when we take a union of the set A and its complement, the resulting answer will be the entire universal set, right? which we have taken for the set A. Now, the second case is when uh, we A intersection A complement is equal to 5. Right? When we take the intersection of the set A and its complement, the result is an empty set. Okay. Now, third one is U complement is equal to 5 like when we take the complement of the universal set it will be an empty set and the fourth one is when we take a complement of an uh, empty set the result will be a universal set now if you remember what is complement it's like we subtract these elements of the set from a universal set okay now uh, there is an example and i'm going to explain each of these four properties to you with the help of an example it will help you to understand it better and how these properties hold true for the complement of z okay now here's an example if u is equal to 1 2 3 till 10 a is equal to 1 3 5 7 9 then prove that a complement union a is equal to universal set a intersection a complement is equal to phi or an empty set u complement is an empty set and empty set complement complement of an empty set is a u is a universal set now i'm gonna explain it one by one okay now number one is a complement union a is equal to u okay now here 
first of all we are going to take the complement A. A complement is equal to U minus A, right? U is 1, 2, 3 till 10 minus A is 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Now, when we subtract all the elements of A from the universal set, the rest of the elements that are here, left here in the universal sets are 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. These are the elements which are not present in the um, universals uh, in the set A. So, this is the complement. Now, when we take the union of the complement and the set itself, now see what happens 2 4 6 8 10 union 1 3 5 7 9 now here you see that when we combine them it goes like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 which is equal to the universal set this is all these are all the elements which are present in the universal set so a complement union a is equal to u true now uh, let's have a look at the other example uh, sorry other property which is a intersection a complement is equal to 5 now here we have already calculated the complement so we don't have to calculate it again. So A intersection A complement is equal to write down 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 intersection the complement which is um, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Right? Now do you see any common element in between these two sets? 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 is in set A and the set B is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So, there is no common element in between them. So, the result will be 5. Right? So, it is also proved that this also holds true. Okay. Now, for the next one, I have to move to another page. Now, the third property that we had to prove is U complement is equal to 5. Now, we have to take the complement of U. Okay? So, U complement is equal to U minus U. So, we have to subtract the elements of the universal set from the elements of the universal set. So, whether I write the elements here or not, it is obvious that it is going to be 0. But still, I am going to write them down for your reference. When you subtract the same elements from the same elements, the answer will always be an empty set. So, U complement is equal to an empty set, which is also proved. Now, the fourth one is really um, easy. We take the fire complement is equal to U. Now, what is a fire complement? Fire complement is equal to u minus 5 like u subtract 1 2 3 4 10 minus an empty set so when you subtract literally nothing from the original set the answer will be 1 2 3 10 which is the universal set itself Hence, proved. So, I have discussed um, the all the properties that are associated with the operational sets, the four operations on sets, that is union, intersection, difference and complement. Uh, with the help of examples, so I hope you have understood these very well. So, this was my today's lecture. I hope you understand it well. Uh, see you in my next video, which, is, which will be on Venn diagrams. So, meet you in my next video. Till then, take care and bye-bye.